karma can also come from our ancestors. Now, this is really interesting. If you think about it, um, most of you, I would assume or hope that you uh, have uh, you know, had the pleasure of meeting your grandparents or getting to know your grandparents, maybe if, even if you were children, right? So one of the things that can happen is that you have older people in your life who will teach you certain things about life. Don't do this, don't do that. You know, you put the pot on the on the burner and you gotta put the butter in it or, or margarine or whatever it is before you start cooking something, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So they teach us a lot that not just about how to do things, but also they teach us about how to view things from their cultural perspective. Even if you didn't get a chance to meet your grandparents, let's say they passed on, um, you th what they taught will be passed down to your parents and then also to you. And it goes back. So there's ancestral karma, okay? Um, like I said, those of you who have had grandparents, you probably remember a saying that your grandparents, oh, I remember when my grandmother said this. Well, I remember my, when my grandfather said this, don't you do that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, those are all those thoughts and feelings and, and you know, thoughts and feelings and how your brain works that, that actually influence your brain. It influences the way you think. Sometimes what they pass down is great. Sometimes what they pass down is not great. You know, and there are different reasons for why uh, negative things might have been passed down. It could have been a, a way to protect you. Or things of that nature. Not just from your grandparents, but your great grandparents and your great great parents, great grandparents, and it goes back. All of that comes from your ancestry. Let's give you a more biological explanation, right? So, for some of you who might be like, eh, I don't know if I believe all that ancestor stuff, right? <laughs> or what my grandparents said. Um, another example is looking at your DNA. We know in uh, Western medicine that, uh, and, and you know, other traditional medicines as well, is that. Things can be passed down throughout the generation. Disease is one of the prime uh, examples of that. Um, just to let you guys know, my uh, just to give you an example, my father passed away recently um, in early September, and he was uh, just both, but before that, for about a year, year and a half, he was having a lot of health issues and something that had just popped up uh, in terms of his health. And what that was is uh, he had some kind of special heart condition. It was it, something, I can't even say what it is, but anyway, it was something that we didn't know about. But like my mother and I didn't know about that in terms of his health or anything like that. And it wasn't until she talked to his siblings that they, most of them, not all of them, had the same issue. And it came from his mother, my grandmother. So you can also have, that's a karmic issue, disease especially, especially is negative karma. Um, so these things can't get passed down from generation to generation, okay? One important, ancestral karma. So there's a particular way in which we deal with ancestral karma. It is a ritual that is called tarpanam, right? So if you take a look here, here's a little concoction here. I'll try to hold up to this camera so you can see. I don't know if you can see the, um, dar it was durva or darva grass. I, I, I get the, the words confused. But this is a concoction of raw uh, rice, white rice, with black sesame seed. And if you see the little stick in here, this is, is it darker grass? You guys can correct me. <laughs> right there, that's a part of that. You take a little bit of this mixture. And so basically what Tarpanam does is that you feed your ancestors and you imagine them going into the light and they become you know, better beings, they become more evolved. You take a little bit of, you don't need a whole uh, shot <laughs> full of this, but you take a little bit. You can see in my hand, I don't know if I can show you. Oops, a little bit. Add, sprinkle some water, and you can do a prayer to your ancestors. I call upon my prayers, I'm sorry, I call upon my ancestors. On my father's side of the family, come and take this offering and go into the light. And you can wait. And then you can also do the same for your, the ancestors on your mother's side of the family. Oops, starting to spill on my laptop here. And then you would take some water and just pour the uh, um, what is it, uh, seeds and rice and whatnot into a bowl of water if you're at a sink or into some kind of body of water. You want it to land into a body of water. Uh, and then after that, it's, it's done. So 
the reason why you do that is that you want your ancestors to not be whispering negative things into your ear. You know, what kind of sense? I'm putting it in kind of you know, a different way, but you want them to be elevated. You want them to move on to the light so that when they're in the light, and you can even uh, pray this at the end, you know, now that you're in the light, when you have visualized them in the light while you're doing your prayer, you can uh, ask for their divine blessings. You want your ancestors to be blessed so that they can bless you. This is a very important ritual to do uh, every day if you can do it. Um, I don't know of any other substitute than this, unless you have Astrovet or Polysin to do the ceremonies for you on your behalf. 